first of all, I want to thank you very much for, for, for interviewing me and also for recognizing that this is new for the Giornate. So many years ago, I started talking to David Robinson, one of the original founders of Chinamamoto, about the possibilities of <clears throat> having a collegium uh, or a lecture on costume design. It seems obvious, it should be obvious that in a silent film with no dialogue, the clothing does a lot of talking. So my husband always says, my husband John always says, there was never a silent movie. Movies always had music. But movies always had costume. And before one word of dialogue, when an actor comes into the frame, who they are expresses so much to the audience. And you know, clothes can reveal or can conceal who somebody turns out to be in the drama. So when I started talking to David Robinson about it, it was a long conversation. Then finally, a few years ago, John and I were here in 2016. And after I was at the festival and I saw the films, this feeling grew so much stronger. And I started to talk to friends of mine in the, in the industry, like Kevin Brownlow. Kevin Brownlow was one of my doctoral examiners, right? And, um, and Pat Lockney, and Pat Lockney was from the Library of Congress. And, and I started talking to them about this obvious omission. How, why aren't we talking about costume? Why aren't we talking about the costume designers of early cinema who made this enormous contribution? But they, they're, somehow the people behind the camera have completely disappeared. And so not only is this a story about the disappearance of costume designers, but it's also a story of gender. And I think as generations have shifted for the better now, we should not disappear women. And whether practiced by women or by men, costume design has always been considered women's work. So for those many reasons, um, thanks to Jay Weisberg, and, and now to the, to the rebirth of uh, Chinamamoto after the pandemic, we finally have the opportunity to talk about silent film costuming. But it really wasn't until I started working on my doctoral dissertation that I understood how marginalized and how undervalued the contribution of costume designers were worldwide, especially for our contribution to international popular culture. All great actors use costuming as a tool for performance. So it would be a very boring performance if they were in beautiful gowns the entire movie. Every actor knows that it's Cinderella over and over and over again, right? If Norma Talmadge were a gown from the beginning to the end, it would just be a fashion show. And we know, I have to say, you know, fashion shows can be pretty boring, right? So in films, you have to have obstacles. And, and Norma uses her clothes like any great performer. She has to be the person. And 
actually, the lecture this week on Thursday will be given by my colleague, Michelle Tolini Finnamore. I met Michelle many, many years ago. Michelle wrote the first doctoral dissertation on early silent cinema in Hollywood. And she published her book. When I read that book, I was humbled by the amount of primary research that she did. So I told you my history with Chinamamuto, and I felt that Michelle should have the opportunity and the honor to give the first UCLA David C. Copley lecture on silent film costuming here at Chinamamuto. My hope is that every year, that we do it every year, and that people, archivists, historians start to recognize the work of those early costume designers. And every year we'll have a different lecture about a different subject. So this essentialness of the audience's emotional connection with the movie has to do with more than just the clothes. It's about the creation of the people in the film. And that's the role of the costume designer is to create personalities who you care about and care about deeply. And when you think about movies and imagine movies, you imagine those people. As a practitioner, the work hasn't changed. And the work hasn't changed from the beginning because ultimately, ultimately we have to be able to read a screenplay. And we have to analyze a screenplay. So I know that costume is really confused, confused in the industry and confused by the audience as fashion or as fashion in film. And it's not uh, because costume design is, it's an intellectual pursuit and a pursuit of the imagination. Costume designers have to be really smart. It's, it's, it's not really about designing a dress. It's not really about designing a gown. It's really about, are you a good reader of the literature? And then after you read that screenplay, can you have a conversation with David Fincher? Can you have a conversation with um, Wes Anderson? Can you have a conversation with Guillermo del Toro? Can you have a conversation with Stanley Kubrick or Steven Spielberg or John Landis or whoever? Can you have that kind of a level of conversation? I think you kind of have to be Vanessa Williams in the center court at Wimbledon. You're having that level of a conversation with the director about what matters the most, those people in that screenplay. Because a costume designer's single purpose is to bring those people in the story to life, period. So if costume designers talk about clothes, my feeling is, is that we diminish our work because our work is not about the clothes. Our work about, is about, does the audience care about those people in the story? And if we can create those personalities every single time, we're doing our job. And the same was true at the beginning and the same is true at the end. Because if the people in the audience don't love the movie, they're not gonna tell their friends, they're not gonna call their mother, they're not gonna say, I'm gonna see it again. Those people won't come to the theater, the movie won't make money, and movie business is about making money and loving movies and sending your friends. 
So the job hasn't changed. So that's, after all these years, that's what I've come to as the definition of costume design. Reading the literature, having the conversation with the visionary, whoever that is, the interpreter of the screenplay, and partnering with that person to bring those people to life.